Uh, last time I tried to talk to you from Ireland, uh, unfortunately I was up the country in a place where we have, shall we say, a broadband deficit, uh, and unfortunately nobody was able to hear what I was saying. Hopefully this afternoon will go a little bit better, but we'll all keep our fingers crossed, please. The purpose of today's session is just to give you some information on the current situation in Ireland vis-a-vis -vis COVID-19. Um, probably not dissimilar to what you're experiencing back home in Ontario, and probably not dissimilar to what students in your own college are being given information on at the minute. Um, as we said previously, ourselves and Canada have reacted somewhat similarly to uh, handling the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, acted dissimilar to both our respective neighbours and both of them are paying the price for it. So at the moment, our death rate yesterday was down to four people. Now that's four too many, obviously, but from where it was two, three weeks ago, it means that we're on very much on the right path. About 10 days ago, a professor from Stanford University did a statistical analysis of the figures coming out of Ireland, and he projected that the crisis will have um, ended it, 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 its remit, shall we say, will have burned itself out by the end of this week. So if we have four on Sunday, we'd be expecting that it'll be go down to three and two and one. Now that presumes that we all continue to behave ourselves, that we all keep the appropriate social distance, that we all uh, stay at home if we're obliged to stay at home. So if you take, for example, for me to come into the college this afternoon to give this webinar, I had to give the college five days notice of my intention to be in the college and verify that I had under undertaken the COVID-19 induction program that IT Tralee uh, operates. So that's done online. So I have to do all that and sign off to say, yeah, I'm okay, we're good to go. Um, as a matter of interest, Germany lifted all its lockdown procedures today. Now, we have always taken a much more conservative approach than, say, Germany, Spain, and Italy. So it's going to be a little bit longer before we entirely lift all our restrictions. The first part of our restrictions were lifted on the 18th of May, and it's going to be done in four stages, each of three weeks long. Now, the warning at the beginning was always given that it could take a little bit longer. We might have to extend them. But yesterday, our prime minister suggested that because things are going so well and we're hitting the point zero in terms of contamination that we're now in a position that we might actually be in a position to shorten some of those deadlines um however to get back to you and the possibilities of you coming to it Tralee in september the truth is that it Tralee is preparing to put a plan together for how we're going to cope with all our students in september that plan has not been finalized as yet different departments different course boards have come together to establish where we might go equally the international office has come together uh, to put in place a plan as to what might happen the one thing that we can be sure of is if you guys turn up in dublin our offer of providing you with transport from there to Tralee will still happen. It probably means that instead of one bus, we're going to have to put on two buses or three buses to ensure that we everybody can be appropriately socially distanced. But that's not a problem. At the minute, if you come from anywhere outside of Ireland into the country, you have to go into quarantine for a full 14 days. As of yesterday, if you're on a flight or a ferry into Ireland, you also have to find, sign a form. It's mandatory, which is called the locator form, in which you sign to say where you're going to be for the next 14 days in your quarantine. And then our police force, the Gardaí, can check up on you if they so wish. So to allow for that, and it doesn't matter what airport you come into, it doesn't matter what college you might be going to, that procedure still applies at the moment. Hopefully it will have been reduced, if possibly lifted by the time you come here. However, if that situation still exists as for September, then the International Office has, is put in the process of putting together what's called the buddy system. The buddy system will simply mean that 
another international student who was already here and is simply continuing on that maybe done second year or doing third year or done third year or doing fourth year that they will be allocated a group of international students and for the first two weeks of September their job will be to do the shopping for them and whatever other errands need to be run. In addition to that for those first two weeks that you're with us you will get your induction programs for the college online so any questions that you have so the normal induction program for example that I would do for Canadians is usually about a two-hour session and it follows a half-day induction program that my colleague Eddie Scully does that would all now happen online because it's online it will probably take a little bit longer um, uh, Trilitown Centre Apartments, which is the apartment block that we use in the package that we offer to all our Canadian students, they have also come on board with us again, uh, not surprisingly, and they have a, uh, issued a guarantee that before any new occupants move into the department, every apartment will be deep cleaned. The reality, of course, is that at the moment, for the summer months, June, July and August, Tralee Town Centre ap Apartments should have tourists in self-catering accommodation. Realistically, we don't expect them to have any apartments occupied between now and next August. So therefore, the deep cleaning that has been done will simply have to be redone again before uh, you guys would be in a position to move into it. We'll also be in a position to work with TTCA as we get nearer to September to put a plan in place so that the quarantine issue, and I want to say quarantine, I, I think the word quarantine is a little bit uh, extreme in that we're really talking self-isolation as long as everybody is being sensible and Tralee Town Centre Apartments will be able to make facilities available to ensure that people can be sensitive. Realistically, we will not have as many students in the in international students coming to the college next year as we have this year and previous years. So Tralee Town Centre Apartments will be able to ensure that there are less numbers of students in the different student accommodations that are available to them. Um, bear in mind, if you do come to Tralee as a student in September, that you are entitled to free medical attention for any COVID related 19 issues the exact same way as if you were an Irish student. And as I say, it's free. There's a hospital in Tralee. Uh, the number of cases in County Kerry have been relatively small compared to some of the rest of the country. But nonetheless, it has existed in the county. And Tralee, uh, Univer Tralee University Hospital, or Kerry University Hospital, as it's called, uh, was in a position to handle all the issues that arose. Um, at the moment, all the institutes of technology, so ourselves, Carlo, Sligo, uh, Letter Kenny, uh, Cork, Dublin and so on. We're all working in tandem to make sure that number one, the academic process that our last year students are going through in terms of the exams, the online delivery and so on, that we all did the same then and we plan to all do the same thing again in September. So at the moment we're considering a starting date of the 14th of September. Now that's not set in stone just yet but it's about one week later than we would normally have started or than we expected to start according to our academic uh, calendar for next year. That will mean, therefore, that the 14 days of self-isolation that I mentioned could, can still be fulfilled from the 1st of September through to the 14th of September, and then you'd be in a position to start classes with all other students on the 14th of September. Now, that 14th of September start is for students uh, of continuing years. Uh, so first year will probably be at least one week later, possibly two weeks later. And for first years, there is a possibility because none of them are going to be at an award stage, that instead of the two semester arrangement that we normally have, that there will be no semester exams and therefore it will simply run through until uh, the end of May next, what they can fulfill their year uh, uh, with us. Uh, like your own college, we ran into an emergency on the 14th of March. And from nowhere, a lot of staff members who had never been online before ended up having to go online to ensure that everything, any uh, contract that we had with students was fulfilled. Now, obviously, some lecturers found that the online arrangement a little bit easier than others. But overall, there's been a very positive reaction from the students and from the staff as to what happened. Obviously, with more training available, because as I say, it was an emergency response to an emergency situation. And with more training available, people will be able to up their game even further. So I would expect that come next September that we will have an even better system available. 
than we had for the students who are graduating just now. They just finished their exams actually last week. If you have a question that you wish me to specifically address, feel free to write it into the comment box at any time. Um, so the programs in Tralee will be delivered on what's called a blended basis. Some of them will be delivered online. Some of them will be delivered uh, in person. Um, however, the priority for face-to-face -face lecturing is going to be given to programs with a significant practical content and to award your programs. Now, any program that you guys are coming on to will all automatically be regarded as award year programs. And obviously a lot of them are going to have a very, very high practical content. So they will get the priority. How these this priority is going to be arranged hasn't been finalized yet. But as I would have told you probably when I met you in Ontario last spring, last winter, uh, I literally opened its Sports Center Academy in September this year. And because of that, all the students of health and leisure and massage moved up into this brand new building. It meant that they vacated another building on the South Campus. So there's a strong possibility that that building on the South Campus can now be reactivated. And therefore it means that because we are a relatively small college, and often our classes are relatively small, that it will be actually easy to sell to self distance or socially distance within a classroom. So if you have say 10, 12 students in third year travel and tourism, it will be easy enough to keep them at least one, two meters uh, apart as is required. At the moment it's a two meter distance. It looks like it's going to be reduced to a 1.5 meter distance in the not too distant future. Therefore, if you put 12 students into a room, social distancing will easily be possible and we will have lots and lots of rooms that can be reactivated for that purpose. The difficulty, however, from my point of view is what happens when those students leave the room? Because they may all end up going into one direction, they'll all end up wanting to go to the same uh, canteen, dining facilities, cafes and so on. So we may have to be in a position, we will have to be in a position to organise one-way systems so that people aren't meeting other crowds coming up stairs and downstairs, we'll probably have to reallocate times that people can use certain uh, refreshment facilities on campus. Um, the issue when all students leave the classroom, um, possibility of extra classrooms on the South Campus being made available again, yeah, that's what I just mentioned. Okay, so if we look at some of the programs that you guys have signed up for, um, the early childhood care and education, um, the typical situation is that you come into year three. The real benefit of that program at the minute is that the first semester of year three is work experience. So my colleagues on that course board have agreed that if you wish, you can take your work experience back home in Ontario. And therefore, there won't be any class requirements until the end of January, in around the 20th, 22nd of January, whatever that Monday is. So therefore, we presume, we hope that any issues with the current coronavirus will have evaporated by that stage, or at least we'll all be in a better position to decide where we're going from there. Uh, also, from the second semester of that program, a lot of it is delivered on what we might call sometimes disparagingly, a, a chalk and talk program. So a lot of them are on a purely theoretical basis uh, and therefore it will be more easy to deliver it online. Uh, Social Care 4 is a uh, quite similar type program, but again, it is a relatively small group of students. So social isolation will be possible, but some of the theoretical subjects will be delivered on an online basis, and about half them which are practical will be have to be delivered face to face so that you can get the practical experience. Um, Health and Leisure 3, again, we men I mentioned the new Kerry Sports Academy. The new Kerry Sports Academy has a sports hall in it, not dissimilar to some of the sports halls that I've been in in various Ontario colleges. And it is the equivalent of three basketball courts in terms of size. So in terms of creating social distance for practical exercises within that hall, it will be relatively easy to achieve. So some of the lectures will be done online, but a lot of the practical work will have to be done 
uh, in, in the hall itself. Also, from a practical point of view, very often the practical side, say for example in colouring, might be demonstrating that you can actually do what you were supposed to have done. So instead of the lecturer just standing there with you while you do it, it may be possible for you to do it on camera and the lecturer can view the process and the approach that you took from a, a remote perspective. Uh, massage fourth year will always be a relatively small group. Remember, from our perspective, it is a stream on the overall health and leisure program. So the number of students who are on that stream by the time you get to fourth year is relatively small. So at a recent course board meeting, the uh, course boards, the, the lecturers on that program, on fourth year of the program, all concluded that it would be actually very possible for them to deliver the lectures, the theoretical lectures, in a classroom situation where social distancing could be managed. However, obviously the practical side of that program means that you are literally hands-on with other people, so therefore uh, personal protective equipment will have to be provided in that situation to ensure that everybody uh, keeps everybody else safe. Travel and tourism, as I say, third year is a small group of students. And again, I don't think social distancing is going to be difficult on that program. However, all the lecturers on the program have agreed that if necessary, they can deliver their module online. And then the second half of the year, the second semester is, as you know, work experience. And again, that work experience can be taken either in Tralee or back home in, in Windsor or Peterborough or whatever the student happens to be from. Animation is slightly different in that obviously a lot of it is going to be computer based and therefore you can be directed to the use of various software and computers but you have to be present for the drawing classes and for the 3D modeling classes. So from that point of view something is going to have to be done differently. One thing, issue that has been considered in the college at the minute is to take one of our large halls, as in we have three separate classrooms, rather well, large classrooms, each one would fit about 70 students, but there's a partition between each classroom so it can get opened up as a large assembly hall. And therefore, that maybe one of those large assembly halls could be converted, because they're all fully connected, could, they could be converted into a rather large computing lab where you would, it could be used by the computing students for a half a day and by the animation students for the second half of the day or what have you. And therefore, it would allow people to socially distance. Maybe it would be possible to put prospect screens between the different uh, terminals and so on. Um, business three. Again, second semester is uh, work experience. Uh, so therefore, hopefully we'll be in a position to organize the appropriate experience or internship from you, um, or for you, I should say. And again, it doesn't have to be taken in Tralee. It can be taken back home in Ontario. As I always say, some students go to Spain because of better weather or what have you. Uh, the issue, of course, is that travel may be restricted uh, in and out of any country uh, when we get into that semester. But most, I, I've sat in on a, on a course board with all the third year business studies people and the fourth year business studies people, and they all accept that a lot of the work can be done online. There are issues from some lecturers, particularly in the management and strategic management area, because a lot of their, that work is on an interactive basis where group projects, case studies and so on are being done and they want the lecturers to work together. Uh, obviously in third year business, the primary issue that I see from it is on the marketing stream where the students undertake a research project, project whereby you're linked up with a company who has a research issue and your job with four of you is to solve the problem for them, conduct the primary research, do the analysis, make the recommendation. It could be done remotely, but it can only really be done effectively, I think, if the students are in a position to work together. Now, it simply means that you need a breakout room where four people could work around a rather large boardroom type table and would still be socially distant from each other. Um, so business fourth year is going to be in a similar position to that strategic market. It's strategic management is going to be an issue because of the interactive element of it. In the accounting area, some issues have arisen as well, in that some of the accountants accept that they could do 
provide their program online, but they would per, prefer the students to have a handbook available to them before the students would come online on the other side. And the college has agreed that, yeah, that handbook can be made, made available to the students, as in it's something that can be printed off between now and the end of June when we're going to break up anyway and be made available to all the students who have signed up. Um, computing with software development is a very practical program and therefore in essence you will, most of that will have to be delivered in a face-to-face -face situation but it's a relatively smallish group and therefore that should be possible. The culinary three program is also very practical, a very practical program but again it's a small program in terms of the number of students and we also have uh, five different production kitchens, five different kitchens, two production kitchens available to us so it should be possible to be able to do that however i would suggest that the possibility of the training restaurant being in use next semester is very very slow and small because the need to have that appropriate social distance civil engineering is also a very practical hands-on program but again the numbers on fourth year of our civil engineering is relatively small to ensure that people are going to be socially distanced throughout the, the uh, room or the lab that they might be in okay uh, some questions are coming through uh, at this point will you accept unofficial final transcripts meet conditions on the offer letter yes uh, we are happy to take your unofficial transcript uh, on the basis that sometime before you register you will have to be asked to deliver a final uh, an official transcript but you only we only ever ask you to do that once because we recognize that it costs you money to get the official transcript so typically what students do is when they come Tutorly, they will bring with them their final official transcript and we'll accept it then. Uh, Sean asks, if I've been accepted but haven't paid yet and want to wait a year, can I still join? Uh, if you want to wait a year, Sean, you can simply contact the international office and ask for a deferral. Uh, the deferral is free of charge and therefore uh, automatically you're entitled to join us next year because the same program is going to exist your official transcript is still going to exist ontario right now has 400 plus cases not getting better do you think that will affect our coming to ireland um i i i i, I don't know is the honest answer yenif uh, as i said ourselves and uh, canada took a very conservative approach to managing the coronavirus other countries were a little bit more uh shall we say liberal in the approach that they adopted and to a certain extent are paying for it now um bear in mind that relatively speaking your 400 new cases is in relation to a population of much much bigger than the irish perspective so in terms of proportions it's probably going to be the same and i would therefore hope that come the end of august beginning of september next when you would be looking to travel that travel restrictions might have been lifted but that obviously depends on the states and the, that as in our state and your state it depends on the airlines themselves as to whether they're going to take planes off the ground because they're not going to bring a flight from toronto up to dublin with six or eight passengers on it so it's only when that has been filled that they will do that and obviously all decisions such as that are going to be based on the medical advice that the different organizations are receiving connie asked me considering the issues of social distancing mentioned with animation and having to share a lab will a personal laptop with programs be needed to keep up with the workload of the program okay if you are working on a and on an online uh, course, Connie, then yes, you will need your own laptop. Now, at the last course board meeting, uh, we one discussion was, well, what specifications would they need on their laptop? And uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Marty Boylan, is to give me uh, a list of the spec that's required and the software that's required for you to have available to you. However, any software that you need is available to get as a license through IT Trilly. So once you're registered as a student, you will get the details of how to sign up to avail of the IT Trilly license. Uh, if you're working in one of our labs, you will automatically have a laptop not a laptop, a, a, a PC that's available to you, separate to everybody else's. And the arrangement will be that once uh, you are finished with it, maybe after an hour or two hours session, that it will be cleaned before the next group of students come in and there'll be a bigger break, maybe 15 minutes, half an hour break. 
Olivia asks, is it possible for marketing students to defer to January? It doesn't like look like September will be possible for us to travel. Uh, that would mean, okay, number one, I'm not on the marketing course board anymore, but that was my home for many, many years, uh, business studies in general, marketing in particular. And the answer is, I see no reason why not. We have an arrangement that there can be no prerequisite within the stages of a program. So therefore, if you were coming into fourth year marketing, for example, you could take the second semester from January through to May, and then the first semester of that, that year from September through to December. It will be the same year long that you will be doing, so it would have no effect on your gene of car. There are no prerequisites within it. It would be a slightly unusual approach that you will be taking, but yeah, it, it would be quite doable, Olivia. Uh, Joshua asks, will the social care degree be recognized in Canada? I have heard this has been an issue. Any degree that you get from IT to Lee, Joshua, is going to be recognized in Canada for its academic standard. As in, we are part of a European Union academic uh, program and all our degrees are recognized worldwide. The issue that you're probably referring to is whether or not it is recognized for professional practice point of view. But if you have already graduated from the third year of a similar program in Ontario, then you're automatically entitled to your professional practice uh, the same way as other students say in the massage program will already have got their professional sanction from the local college. Love Frida asks, if we choose to not attend this year and we have paid our deposit through TransferMate, how would the refund be given back through uh, transfer mate or will IT truly provide us with that refund? Every Any money that you pay to us, irrespective of how it's paid, look, Preet, comes to IT truly and we hold it in reserve until such time as, shall we say, you pull the trigger, as in, I want to register now to be here from September through to January. So if for any reason, up to the end of August, beginning of September, you decide, well, no, I'm not going to make it because for personal reasons, for family reasons, because the airline isn't operating because Mr. Trudeau and his government are advising us not to travel or whatever, then you will automatically be entitled to uh, that refund through IT Trilly. It won't come through TransferMate, it'll come back to you through IT Trilly. IT Trilly, as I've always said to you, is a small college and therefore we're always very flexible and we will always look to put in place an arrangement that suits the individual student. So from that point of view, we've always been flexible on the repayment of deposits because every year some student pays a deposit and then finds, well, I can't come up with the rest of the money, so I'm going to have to pull out. They've always got their deposit back and we will continue to be even more flexible this year because we entirely accept the situation that we all find ourselves in. You on your side, us on our side, we're all trying to figure out where we're all going to be in, in September next uh, Vincent asks, following Lovebreed, if we paid, can we wait and keep it on file until next year and just defer until next September? Uh, that choice would be yours, uh, Vincent. You can either simply defer and we will give you back your deposit and you pay it again the following uh, following year. Or alternatively, you can decide that we could hold it for you and it'll simply re be activated in uh, this time next year. My advice to you, however, would be that you are putting money on deposit with us for a 12-month period. Something could happen in that 12-month period that you might decide, oh, maybe I'm going to have a different option or there's something else you want to do with the money in the short term and so on. So if I were you, I, you know, and here I'm talking against myself now, but if I were you on a personal basis, if you decide I'm going to defer until the following September, I take my money back and then start the process there payment of deposits at that point. Uh, Olivia asks, would the deferral to January be possible for students entering third year? Uh, the third year one, Olivia, is a little slightly more complicated, but only slightly more complicated, in that January is uh, a work experience where uh, for the third year students, whereas fourth year, it's all in class. Now, at the moment, with the ECCE students, early childhood care and education students, we have always insisted that because the first semester of their third year is work experience, that they would have to come to us because otherwise we wouldn't have met them. 
until the following September, uh, January, and then they're only going to be here for a few months and they're gone again. Uh, and therefore, that's the type of system that you would be coming into one semester of work experience, we wouldn't necessarily meet you unless you turned up in Tralee. However, we've changed the system to suit the current situation that we're in. So yes, off, offhand, it, it obviously is a decision for the course board, but I can see no reason why you couldn't do your work experience from January through to May, June, uh, even if you wanted to do it in, in Ontario somewhere and then come to us for September through to December. It would reduce your international experience, but maybe if it's just you want to get that third year degree with even the possibility of going through to fourth year, that will not be a possibility be a problem. Again, we will always be flexible in that respect. Uh, please contact COM regarding, sorry, I should call that KOM. It's just a bad habit that I have. Please contact KOM regarding questions relating to applications, acceptance, deferral, and so on. As you know, this event is hosted by uh, Martin Kelly and I see Sue Dorney was on uh, previously. Adam is keeping us technologically online. Uh, those are the guys in Hamilton who are looking after you over there. So if you have any queries at all, they will be happy to handle them for you. Um, if they don't have the answer, they'll come to us and we'll provide it to them. Uh, any assistance that they provide you is entirely free of charge to you. Joshua says, I would like to attend in September. My partner will be coming with me. Would you be able to live with me in the residence that's in the package? We are, would we have to find our own place? Um, Tralee Town Centre Apartments have offer four bedroom apartments, and one of which is a slightly larger room, and they refer to it as a double room. However, they prefer if students occupy it on an individual basis that there are four bedrooms and there are four individual students so in most cases joshua where students come to tralee uh, with a partner if they come as a couple they usually have to get their own accommodation outside however we would be in a position to give you advice and guidance on that through the local estate agents, through advertising in the local newspapers, or we have a, a panel of what we call our preferred accommodation providers operating out, out, out from around the town that we have experience with, and the, our student union, or, or what you would call the student association, is in a, they manage that, and they'd be in a position to give you the full list of um, accommodation providers outside of the normal student residences, if you wished. Okay, um, we seem to be running out of questions, but that's okay. Um, you know, as I say, if you have any further questions, require any further information, feel free to, to talk to KOM consultants. They will happy to be happy to answer your questions. Alternatively, if you want ever want to talk directly to me, feel free to email me. I think I recognize most of the names. So there, I think actually I recognize all the names now looking at the list. So therefore, if you want to get in contact with me at any time in the future, feel free to do it. I'm always happy to talk to you. And if you felt it would be of help to have a, a Skype call or something, we can organize that as well. Um, the question, of course, is what will IT Tralee and Ireland in general look like next September? We don't know. Uh, one of the great things that we talk about when we're selling Ireland as an international student destination is the social life, the Irish pub and so on. The Irish pub will not be opened until late August at the moment. That's where our roadmap says that we'll open and it can only open then, then if it is attached, the, there's food being served and so on. So some of that experience is going to be a little bit different for you. Uh, the likelihood of nightclubs being open in September is very, very small. Um, I don't know, but I, I, I imagine it will be difficult for anybody to manage an appropriate social distance in a nightclub by midnight, by 1 a.m. or so on. So therefore, that element of the experience is going to be different. There's going to be more control of the movement of people throughout the campus on what way you can walk down a particular corridor and so on. So again, that element of your experience is going to be different. But you're going to be called the COVID generation in the future, so therefore that maybe that is an appropriate experience. But as I say, we 
don't we we really don't know we're working to some extent in the dark as much as you are but i do know that our emergency committee is working almost around the clock to try and figure out exactly how things are happening this week the emphasis on is on our exam board meetings they're happening on uh, it's supposedly thursday and friday i just saw a note going by earlier on that no they've been extended now wednesday thursday and friday because we need to give more time to the students to make sure that everybody gets the opportunity to speak in the normal manner and so on so it will be next week now before any final decisions for next September have been made by the time we get the current year students out through the system and out the other end. And I'm delighted that so many of our Canadian students are with us but had to go home early. They didn't get the experience that they signed up for, um, but they're still going to all successfully graduate presuming that their exam results go okay now the one thing that if you talk to any of them they're probably going to mention the weather because they were here in february and the weather was horrendous it went wind and rain and then the college campus closed on the 12th of march and the weather changed and we've hardly had a wet day since we've had the most remarkable spring that ireland or truly has ever experienced unfortunately our natural students didn't get to experience it because they were sent gone home at that stage likewise in september i always advise students that this might be the only time you're in europe this might be the only time you're in ireland take the opportunity to travel and see a bit realistically whether there would be restrictions on travel is open to question however there there's an airline in ireland called ryanair and almost certainly at the very first opportunity they're going to get flying again and usually what ryanair do after a crisis there was a crisis a few years ago when there was a strike with at ryanair there was a crisis before that when there was a major volcanic eruption in iceland and airplanes were grounded in europe for a whole night not two three months Ryanair responded with what they called a seat sale whereby you could get to anywhere in Europe for five euros and so on uh, almost certainly Ryanair are going to have lots and lots of cheap deals available if you want to explore a bit of Europe but the presumption of course is that the quarantine has been lifted and so on but eventually it will have been uh, Love Breen asked me for students coming from Ontario I understand that we require medical insurance is there anything else that we could have coming along to is there anything else that we should have coming along to Tralee uh, essentially no uh, Love Breed. Uh, with your medical insurance you're obviously covered in Ireland as a living in Ireland you're automatically entitled to our public health system and the real purpose of medical insurance is that if you wanted to get back home uh, or if it was an emergency situation and you wanted private uh, medical insurance in Ireland and um, the only other thing that you really need coming to Ireland is that we suggest our weather is a little bit different to yours our temperatures never get down as low as yours get down on the other hand they never get up as high as yours get, get up uh, we have what you might call a more moist cold in Ireland. So therefore, bring a few extra layers with you. It's I always find it's easier to keep out the cold in uh, Ontario than it is to keep out the cold in Ireland. Our cold gets down to maybe minus three, minus four. Uh, you know, that stuff of minus 24 and 25 that you do. We don't do that at all. Uh, KOM will arrange more sessions at Tralee as the weeks go on. They'll give you the opportunity to receive further updates as, as they're, they're released. Also, for any deposits sent for our tuition, are there any late fees if we may be a couple of days late? No, Love Breed, there are no late fees uh, or fees for you being late. We would, out of courtesy, suggest that if you think you're going to be late, that you just mention it to the international office. Um, Lila, my colleague there, she will look after that. And Lila is always very flexible because her number one priority is a student. So she will organize a payment system that suits you. But, but no, there are no fees uh, for being late. There are no fees if you want to defer. There are no fees other than the actual fees themselves. Um, Joshua, sorry, I think you might have answered this already. The social care program will be able to be done remotely from Ontario for the first semester. Um, some of the social care program could be done from Ontario for the first semester. This decision from that particular board, course board meeting last week, was that they would do as much of it online as they could, but the practical side of it would have to be done in smaller groups, or work groups, uh, tutorials, and so on. So it's going to be a combination of face-to-face uh, -face and online. So the presumption, Joshua, would be that you would be interly um, 
that you would be doing your face to face from your own accommodation in Tralee and then you would come onto campus for two days a week or for uh, four mornings a week or something like that. It won't be the usual situation whereby you'd be here maybe for five days a week, but only two or three hours a day that we'll probably have to confine it such that a group of students will be in the classroom from nine to one. And then the classroom is deep cleaned from one to two and then a different group of students get a chance to use it from two to six and so on. So KOM suggests, thanks again for your time, sir. Lots of great information. Thank you, Martin. It has been my pleasure again to work with you. Thank you, Adam, for keeping us uh, on, on air. Uh, so hopefully we get a chance to talk to you again on maybe not september as we would normally have it but maybe sometime in the future maybe our next visit will be delayed until spring but definitely ontario will be on my list for the next academic year so if that's all the questions i'm going to take my leave of you as i say to each one of you feel free to email me directly at any time you wish or feel free to talk to KOM and they will look after you from the uh, from uh, the Ontario side. I, 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 we usually describe uh, KOM in Hamilton as being our international office when we're not there. So feel free to ask them all the questions you would ask, you know, your own international office if you wished. Okay, guys, thank you all for your time. And I hopefully we will see some of you in, in Tralee in September. If you do, we will look after you uh, as we would any of our own students. We will look after you as one of our own. So good evening. <laughs>